What up, internet? Welcome to Bricks and Beer, episode two. For those of you who've been watching, welcome back. Uh, for those of you who haven't, go watch the other episodes, because it's really weird that you're watching this one, not the others. So, bam, there's a link. Go click that. Uh, first things first. So, I know some of you are confused. You're like, Andrew, you said it's episode two, but this is the third one. I, I don't understand what's going on. Uh, I'll tell you why. It's because I had a dumb idea. Um, I decided to call the first one episode zero for a couple of reasons. The main thing was I'm kind of a child of the, the late 80s, early 90s. And, um, you know, my prime comic book reading age was like 1995, probably right around there. At the time, the industry was doing a lot of weird shit. And we'll, we'll move on from comics, but just need to explain some context. Uh, so at the time, there was like all these like one-offs. All these titles had like, you know, little offshoot kind of ash can side titles. And they would do dumb shit. And uh, Image Comics was like notorious for it. Like you'd get like the Witchblade Holiday Special Issue Zero or Issue One Half. That was the other thing. Um, and I kind of blame Wizard. Wizard had a lot of like packing comics that came with their magazines. So I read lots of those. Uh, I don't know if Witchblade Holiday Special Zero is a real thing. Um, if it's not, I'm sorry. It's just an example. Uh, so yeah, that's why it's episode zero. It's mainly that. Um, the other reason, and I think it kind of ties into that whole comic book thing, is I wasn't really sure if this was actually going to keep going. Uh, so it's going. So fuck it. It's the third one. That's it. Moving on. Um, bricks. Bricks. And beer. Have some beer. Oh, that's delicious. So, today, we're going to talk about a couple of things. We'll talk about the Lego, like usual. We'll talk about the beer, like usual. Um, real quick, though, I've gotten a ton of feedback, and the feedback is kind of surprising, because it's very little about said Lego. It's more actual beer suggestions, which makes me really, really fucking happy, guys. Ah, uh, yeah, beer. Um, and like most of you guys, I know you're beer nerds, so you're picking, like, small batch, limited artisanal collaboration, like the most fucking nerdy of beer nerd things you can do. Um, to be honest, I haven't tried any of them. I, I'm i super stoked. Keep sending them in. Tell me what kind of beers you guys are drinking. Uh, if we drink a beer together right now, fucking cheers. So, cheers. So yeah, keep sending the suggestions. Uh, I will try them. I just haven't had a chance to. I've been kind of busy. Uh, if I see them in a bar, like, by happenstance, I'm definitely going to order one if I can remember the suggestions. Otherwise, my real plan is to do, quote-unquote, air quotes, see, quote-unquote, live beer tasting here. Meaning, I'll take one of your fucking beers um, and drink it on the podcast, and I'll tell you what I think of it. I'll just give you, like, a quick, honest review. Um, so, yeah, we're going to talk about lots of beer later, but for this episode, we're just going to talk about one beer. And some of you are like, Andrew, I'm expecting hyped beers. Like, where is the super niche beer? We'll, we'll go there. But tonight, it's the good stuff. The black stuff. Guinness. Um, going to talk about a bunch of Lego. Only going to talk about one beer. And the reason why I want to talk about this one beer is because this one beer is kind of special. It's, it's special to me in that it's got a lot of history to it. So I'll tell you a little bit about the history, and then we'll do some Lego, and maybe we'll talk more about some beer, and maybe some more Lego. Uh, so the first time I tried Guinness, I was a much younger man, and I had tried one stout before it, and it was the worst beer at that time I'd ever drank. And that beer is a beer called Old Rasputin, and Old Rasputin is a nice imperial stout. Uh, it's got complex flavor. For an inexperienced beer drinker, it's the most bitter, gnarly beer to drink, so I did not have a good time. And it, it just killed the stout game for a while. Like, I couldn't do it. Uh, so, so you know, moving on. And there was this other fucking stupid urban legend, which people have told me about today, uh, which is that if you drink an old Rasputin down to the last inch, that last inch tastes like a shot of vodka. No, no. Uh, so, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't so great. Obviously, I like the stuff a little bit more now. Um, so, fast forward a couple of years. Been drinking beer a little bit more. I'm, I'm like mid-college-ish. I'm, uh, I'm 20 years old, and that's kind of important to the story. 
Um, I work at a, I'm in my hometown over summer and I work at a large chain grocery store, which I'm not going to name the name of, but uh, let's just say it rhymes with Ader O's. So I'm working at Ader O's and uh, I, I've got this amazing job, like super cool company. They let the employees have like tastings of all the foods. So you can actually fucking know what you're talking about when people come in. And uh, it's a cool place to, it's a cool place to work. There's a certain perk of me being 20 years old and working there though over the summer is I, this guy, can buy beer with an employee discount. Fucking amazing. So we, uh, we're getting some beer for a party. So I'm, I'm working, I get off work, talk to my peoples, I get, I get my beer. And uh, my buddy Carl was obsessed with Guinness. And Carl has been my friend forever, like early high school. And he's always had like one problem. And he recently, that problem's like now over. But it, his problem was he looked like a child. And he was like 18 months older than me. So essentially he was like two years older than me all the time. And so, you know, he got his license two years before anybody of our high school scene. Or like he turned 18. So like there was like a two year lag before like he could go to the strip club with friends kind of a deal. Um, but he wants to get some fucking Guinness and they don't sell Guinness at eight or O's, but they sell it at another grocery store across the street. Uh, I don't need to leave out that grocery store's name. It's Ralph's. It's just a fucking Ralph's. Uh, there's no illegality or allegedly occurring at the Ralph's, but everybody thinks there is. So they won't fucking sell Carl the beer. And it, it takes like a manager, an assistant manager and fucking like they're calling people and all this shit. And like Carl's just like a 22 year old kid trying to buy beer. And, and it's funny. So we, we got the beer, and it was kind of funny. And, like, I still give Carl shit about that to today. And um, we got some Guinness. And because we were young, dumb, early 20-year-olds, we made Guinness floats, which is ice cream and Guinness. Uh, it's not bad. It's kind of like a immature thing to do, I guess, as a, as a beer drinker. But, you know, fuck it. Do, do you. I also jumped in a jacuzzi with a giant sombrero that night. So it was fucking rad. Um... Yeah, so let's talk about the Lego, because I, I kind of want to tie these two things together. And what I, I kind of want to talk about tonight is a theme that would cross over both. And it's, it's the evolution of taste. It's how your tastes mature, how you grow to appreciate things and like certain things, and maybe you don't like certain things so much anymore. So let's talk about Lego. Let's talk about the early days. So like, the early days. You all see I've got this cheeky rabbit logo over here. This is my, my Duplo logo. See? Duplo. Uh, so yeah, my parents got me Duplo. I was a baby and whatnot. And um, Duplo is fucking great, guys. It's it's awesome. Like, so I, I recently acquired this piece, but I had this piece 30 fucking years ago. This is the greatest piece ever. Uh, see? Ah, I have dumb Duplo eyes now. And they move. How fucking awesome is that? See? You can, you can look all kinds of ways. Uh, so yeah, Duplo. Duplo obviously is like a critical thing in building your Lego skills and fucking making you a functioning adult, apparently, or a man-child who plays with toys. Um, so yeah, Duplo. And then, you know, you mature on to other things. There's, there's kind of a weird thing that's happened in my life recently that's like a, a full circle Duplo thing is, uh, I actually bought Duplo the other day that wasn't like out of somebody's random brick haul thing it was like actual like Duplo in the store and uh I had to buy it because I had to buy it for a child for like a small child and it's a weird thing to do that and the weirder thing is I did it because there's children that come to my house sometimes and uh you see up here there's like all this fucking wall of lego right and there's there's kind of like a shelving thing above here I guess I can fucking show you guys so see Oh, this shit, this shit's like up here. There's some Transformers and some other bullshit. So I used to have these like dinosaurs, right? Um, fuck. I can fucking show you guys actually. Bam! So I had dinosaurs. Like, here's a Triceratops head. It's just the head. But uh, there's some dinosaurs. So I used to have those dinosaurs up there. And like, that's what my wife would do. We'd give to the kids when they came over. You know, neighbor friends or friend friends or, you know, fucking random little kids that come to my house. That's a joke. It's a joke. Uh, yeah, so once I took them off of there to put other miscellaneous bullshit, 
she was kind of like at a loss. She was like, oh, fucking this little kid came over and I don't know where the little kid Lego is. Can you show me? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I, I could show you. I could be like, well, it's in that drawer and just grab the big pieces. But like this to her, this whole background behind me, it's just like one big blur of ABS and living room invasion. Uh, so I'm, I'm not going to put her through that. Like, I don't expect her to be able to, like, pick the fucking individual kids safe Lego out of there as opposed to, like, some 30-year-old classic space tile that the child eats. Uh, so, yeah, so I, I bought some Duplo, and I put it in a basket. And that's really weird to me because I never thought I'd have, like, children in my house, let alone, like, have to supply, like, kid safe Duplo kind of shit. So I bought some new Duplo. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about it. I bought, I bought like, the pole cart one. It's in a basket over there. Uh, but I did grab some printed pieces, which are fucking rad. Uh, so I'm clearly going to, like, poach out of my little kid Duplo at some point. Like, make some industrial shit with this awesome shit. Or some organic, weird alien spam cake kind of deal. See? You could, you could, yeah. See, like, live building. Imagine that sunk in some plates or something. Oh, uh, yeah, so Duplo. So that's where it all begins. That's the beginning. It's not It's not amazing. It's not great, but it's not bad. I didn't have, like, a traumatic experience, kind of like I did with Guinness. And being a little kid, you know, you, uh, you progress to system sets. And I, I don't have a lot of shit together, just period. But I do want to pull out some visuals because some people have been bitching about, like, I talk about all this shit and I don't show any photos or, like, boxes or references or anything. So, fucking by, by request, by you the people, you, you control the action. Um, the small set. I gotta tell you about my love of the small set. The small set is the greatest thing LEGO has ever done. Because they build worlds, right? They build all these themes and these, like, fast-reaching shit. And you see these idea books and they have these, like, massive sweeping dioramas that are all themed out and they're they're building this world and they're like kind of creating stories and you want to be in that world and that's like the greatest thing about that like early 80s lego feel is that they really did build worlds and as a kid who only had exposure to printed media we didn't have the bullshit internet that i'm talking to you on right now um you spent hours just staring at this shit and like Living in those worlds, or at least if you're a weird fucking kid like I was, you did that. Um, so I had some Lego, you know, I got I got some sets and I had a little bin of Lego parts. But the the small set thing was so cool because you could you could just grab like a chunk of that little universe and like bring it into yours. So like you get a small set. Let's say you get this. This fucking excellent ice planet set. So you get a dude, critical part of the whole theme, obviously. You gotta have the dude. You get a new printed tile. You get a, a fucking exclusive chainsaw piece. Like, this was brand new. This was fucking mind-shattering at the time. The visor was the, the biggest crazy deal. Like, see how sexy that fucking visor is? You kids are spoiled today with your minifigure action. This was, this was like, the hot shit. Um, so anyway, you get this. And then, if you've got blue or white Lego, which you inevitably do because you got some fucking Lego in a bin... Or even if you don't, you just Rainbow Warrior the shit out of it. You can partake in this beautiful universe that LEGO has built. So I've, I've got, like, all these sets, man. Like, I, these were, like, the game changer for me. So let's, like, let's just go through some, and I'll, I'll tell you some. Fucking Explorians, dude. This, this was, like, a straight the money drop. This was so crazy. This helmet, brand new, took a stud on the front, which was crazy weird. You could plug them into things. Brand new gun piece that kind of is like it's in system with the other ones, but like crazy. These these fucking flipper pieces, crazy stickered parts, round dish. Like this set right here. This is like you compare this set to this and you see the evolution, but it's the same deal. It's like they're giving you that little peek into the universe. So obviously I'm a space dude, right? Like love me some space. So, you go up, you go into space. It's all about exploring crazy alien worlds. Go down into the water. Dude. Dude. So this set, this is like a perfect example of what's awesome about the small set, right? Because you get the dude, 
again, who's awesome. He has this, like, brand new fucking crazy hydro suit. Oh, fuck. Uh, yeah, see? Hydro suit. Unedited. Uncut, folks. You gotta forgive this in the name of authenticity. Hydro suit. Fucking. You get the new sexy octagonal turbine cylinder snot pieces like this just as a snot piece alone would be really weird and like new and crazy and awesome but it's octagonal which is also weird and it goes with the the canopy and then granted we got this canopy before but you didn't get it in blue and like that's the critical thing here right so this palette of the original aquanauts is basically yellow trans blue couple of you know the trans neon deal but even if you didn't have that this is super recognizable so all you need to do is take your fucking bin of yellow lego you take this new windscreen you take these new fucking sexy engine parts and the brand new awesome color claw version and like this was classic space but like this shit was rad i did, this was the first version of this claw i had i i actually no i lied totally lied i had a great one but i remember this one more and I'm not sure why. I think it's because this whole universe, like, I went deep with the Aquanauts. So this is the good guy one. This is the bad guy one. Equally as rad, right? Like, big-ass printed fucking snot piece that you could build into... Oh, there we go. That's better on the glare, guys. Like, into all kinds of models. The chrome fucking spears, which is game-changing. The bad guy version of the fucking aqua suit. You get the flippers. Like, this whole deal is rad. And this was, like, no money. And this was the kind of shit that, like, you didn't have to wait for a birthday or Christmas or, like, a big excuse holiday. This was the kind of thing that, like, if your parents were like, hey, we're going to go to the toy store because I have to go to the fucking mall or whatever. And you were like, oh, can I get this? Can I get this? It, it seemed to be affordable. And I, I didn't have tons of money when I was a kid. So, like, I, mostly what I got was small sets. And I got some big sets, but, like, it was mostly small sets. So I got, I got like two more for you. So yeah, I, as you can tell, we're going, we're going with a the theme here. So uh, I don't have the good guy version of this one, but this is the bad guy version. So like they all kind of look alike, if you notice. Like it's like one main printed awesome element, like a, a whole piece, like essentially a thematic visual framing device. Like they all the aesthetics between these. This is basically the same set skewed four, five times, fucking, there's countless times they've done this. Lego knows exactly what they're doing. They're giving you just that little chunk, that little tasty niblet that then you can, like, it's like a spore. You just jam that shit in there and it takes over your collection and then you're like, I'm in this world. So this dude, and, like, a lot of this shit, like, I got more of the Aquanaut sets and stuff. I'm pretty sure this was the only set of this theme I had. But I rocked this piece in so many fucking models and, like, in the theme and without outside the theme. Because kind of by the time like this version of the Aquanauts came out, I was I was building a lot of my own shit. So it was just getting cool new pieces. But and, and you know, some of them, a lot of it's about the minifig action, right? And there's one set that, you know, it's pretty much two minifigs. It's what you're getting. It's kind of the classic one. Well, actually there's there's some that I don't have the visuals for. So like the samurai one, same deal. Didn't buy any of the fucking samurai sets for the most part. Got one samurai dude, built a Japanese castle. Bam. Motherfucking dragon, dude. Bat dude and a dragon. And bat dude's kind of whack, to be fair. Like, even as a young child, I knew this dude was, like, cartoonishly weird and stupid. I think he has a giant mustache, which makes him extra dumb. Uh, but he's got the chrome sword. And more importantly, you get the fucking black dragon, dude. And you didn't have to buy the fucking $50, like, castle on a base plate to get a black dragon, which is so awesome. It's, it's this amazing principle of building a modular world that can keep going and keep just expanding. So obviously, like, the small sets were a big deal to me, right? Sorry, this is so good. I might actually drink two beers during one fucking podcast, which will be... A record for this show so far, so hopefully you guys keep drinking beer. You probably are drinking much faster than I am, because you don't have to talk and bullshit and do all the crap I have to do. So, 
the small sets. Let's talk about let's talk about two small sets. Um, I fucked up and I, I don't have the visual. I could look it up on the phone. But the Black Tron 2 Rover, right? The Black Tron 2 Rover, Black Tron, Black Tron 2 Rover is amazing. It was all the Black Tron 2 stuff. Like that wasn't really like giving me a peek into the world because I bought the whole fucking world. Like at that time, my somehow I got the big base and I got the the double one, but all the sets. So this is my version of the rover. And this is an old model, but fucking you guys probably want to see, you know, not not just official Lego tonight. So here he is. He's got some some wobbly action. So he's he's fun to roll around, see? And uh the the coolest thing about this fucking rover, this, like the other ones, comes with a dude, right? And that dude, not only does he just like got the new printed torso. But he's got the new fucking sexy minifig part. Now this one has a... These normally are trans yellow, but they're not on this guy. Because this is the, the new school version. Uh, but yeah, so the jetpack. Like the jetpack is... It, it was a game changer. It was like every single one of these little small sets for me was kind of a big deal. Because they, they did really change the game. Like, sorry, I'm fucking around trying to get this dude back in here. Ah, uh, there we go. Was it a satisfying click when he went in there? So the small sets. So there's one small set that like I, I've really got to talk about. I've got to tell you a story, and this is kind of where the podcast gets weird, right? So just take a drink. Bear with me. We'll we'll get there. We this is all gonna tie together, maybe. So the small set. The small set is the space bro. This is the one. This is the greatest small set of all time. I say that totally biased. Because this set, this set did a lot for me. Um, I, I can tell you this story, and there's parts of it that I'm not really sure about. So, I know I went to Toys R Us, and I know I went with my buddy Jared. And I was probably around six years old. And uh, Jared's mom was a single mom, and my mom was a single mom, and they hung out. I don't know what they did. They were adults. I was a six-year-old. And for some reason, like, we all ended up going together, probably to go do something else, probably something, like, terrible, boring for a kid, like, pay a bill or something. Um, but then we ended up in Toys R Us. And Toys R Us, when you're six years old, is amazing. It's walls of Lego everywhere. I'm just now coming to this epiphany that I have this, like, thing for walls of Lego. Uh, but, the, you know, you're small, you're wee, so the aisles seem giant, and they go endless just forever on both directions. And so I'm I'm running down these aisles with Jared, and we're, we're just taking in the magical wonder of all these worlds that Lego has built, and the endless, joyous-filled aisles of Toys R Us. Being small children that we are, we obviously want some toys. And uh, our parents relented, the moms relented. So Jared and I each got the Space Probe set. Now this set is the epitome of a great fucking small set. So it doesn't have a lot of the like sexiness the other ones have, right? So like the printed big new slopes and all that shit. But at the time, this was a game changer because it came with a fucking robot. And you got these robot arm pieces and you know, as a space dude, you, you if you don't love this part, you've got to turn in your space card. Antenna, fucking rocket booster, weird little hovering robot dude. Brad, you get the space probe itself. You know, detachable missile. Um, you can kind of like aim this. So if you want to turn it into some sort of like offensive war machine as opposed to like a friendly satellite launcher, you can do that, which I'm, I'm kind of sure Lego knew about that. Um, in today's perspective, this that's fucking hilarious because you get a naked space dude. Uh, but, you know, at the time, it was amazing. So, like, I have this, like, really fond memory. And I think Jared and I, like, got these sets and then went back to his house and, like, played with them for hours. So, I've got this, like, infatuation with the small set, right? It's clearly rooted in a lot of nostalgia. Um, speaking of nostalgia, so I'll, I'll show off one more model and then we'll, we'll kind of move on to something else. Um, so, this is my version of said space probe and and see he's got a little robot too uh so we'll do i guess i could show you some comparisons 
So you you kids are spoiled with your new modern pieces. Like, see, so you get these kind of robot arms. You, you probably don't have the rich appreciation for these kind of robot arms that I do. Uh, yeah. So there's I'll link to a photo of this so you can see this better. You might notice this this has the naked dude. Um, I did pull this out of storage. It's like one of the few things that I've built that I've kept together. And it had a blue guy, so in that link that was over there. Um, you'll notice it had a blue guy. I, I just wanted to make it match this because, you know, feels. The feels. Look at these. You feel me? You feel me, bro? All right. So, moving on. Bigger sets. So I got some bigger sets, right? And that's kind of like how you build the mass. That's how you build your, your raw world building materials. Um, I'm not going to show you guys any like new models tonight because I'm going to a convention. I'm cranking on shit, but none of it's like presentable. But I, I'll show you some models. Um, so like you know, I got um, the the this is like the perfect cow like to show you. Uh, I got this one. Uh, is that it? Mm, yeah, that's the Black Falcon's Fortress. That was the money castle set, and I also got. The Alien Moon Stalker. I think I got these, like, right around the same time-ish, the same year-ish, holiday-ish. Maybe it was, like, one Christmas and then the next Christmas. But I remember, like, this being, like, what was the bulk of my collection. Um, my mom always talks shit about this set because she built this for me on Christmas morning. And I, I, th I was probably too young, realistically, to get this set. But my I was, like, oh, crazy. And so my mom built it, and, like, it took her hours because she's not an experienced a fold and this is not what she enjoys doing. And uh, she did it, and I fucked around with the drawbridge for, like, ten minutes. And I was like, cool, I'm going to build something else. And then she was like, no, you have to play with that. I spent so much time. You cannot take that apart. Um, it was like, you know, I, I, I feel bad for her. I was like, I was a kid. I'm sorry. I just didn't want to fucking play with the drawbridge anymore. Uh, so this set... Oh man, this set's money. This is the Alien Moon Stalker. It's got a, a removable head, a removable ass. They connect together because, you know, because. Um, it's all modular. It's fucking rockets that come out the top, and it has this crazy shuffling action because at that time, like, a lot of the space sets had crazy shuffling action. Um, I did actually have this, like, built, like, a year ago because built the bigger one, and the bigger one, you know, he walks on the screen, and he's big and beefy, and uh, he doesn't shuffle, but he's got, you know, articulated legs, and little little articulated feet, like, that's the, kind of the cute part, he's, you know, he's, he's got little toes, so he can, he can, you know, softly paw at you, um, yeah, so he's got all the functionality of the original one, uh, this is, this is like one of the older models I have together that I pulled out for Bricks LA, so rockets fly, you know, pew, um, I had lots of fun with this original set, because you Dude, it's like a mobile base, and then all this shit comes off. And the weirdest part about the original set, um, I don't know if you guys can really see it, it's like anamorphic. Like, that's a face, dude. And the other one, the ass one, has like an elephant face, because it's got like the grabby claw. So I, I kind of replicated the face ness And um, these pop off, you know, like you do, because classic space. And uh, they they use the same mechanism or uh, locking mechanism as the original set, which is pretty cool uh, because it's backwards compatible. And like the original set, you can pop the said connector off. And this is this is in the original set and this one. This connector only exists to do this, which is the head and ass attack vehicle version. Um, which, again, this is like one of those things, like the Renegade, where it's like, I did this to do it. I never fucking pull this off and, like, run around my house with just the, the ass head. Um, I do stomp the thing around, because I'm a man-child, and that's fun to do. Uh, so, yeah. So, evolution of taste. Small sets. I, I do like small sets, still. I also really like Guinness now. So this is where we're going to kind of tie it all together. So, like, beer, right? I, I mentioned beer suggestions earlier. I mentioned all of you are really into all these IPAs and really hoppy beers. I am, too. I'm not going to deny that. Uh, but I feel like that's kind of, like, where 
where your your palate grows and you kind of have to be a more experienced beer drinker to to appreciate some of that stuff um and you probably don't appreciate things like Bud Light and Coors Light the way you used to which is kind of unfortunate in some ways and then some ways it's way better that you appreciate new better things right so Guinness I really like Guinness Really, really like Guinness. So much so that I flew to fucking Dublin and got certified. That's right, bitches. This is an official certificate that I know how to properly pour a Guinness. Now, I know what some of you were thinking right now. And fuck you guys. That was out of a can. I learned out of a tap. It's a different thing. You can't hate on me for improperly pouring this Guinness. Uh, especially because it's, you know, Rocket Widget. Like, look at that shit. It's amazing. It's science. Um, it's got nitrogen. And I'm now spilling in my living room, which is perfect. This is, uh, this is right around the podcast where shit gets real. So stay with me. We're, we're, we don't have too much longer. We've, we've been here for about a half hour. And uh, we'll, we'll get out of here soon. But I do, I do want to talk about modern day taste of Lego for me and sets. In particular sets. I'll talk about Lego in general and like buying Lego and how I buy Lego in another episode. But small sets. So I still love the small sets. I still buy the small sets. Um, the most recent one that I'm really into is the Arctic set. I don't have an image of it. They, I bought four of them. They're sorted in there. But all of the Arctic line. My favorite line of last year, 2014. Look at this shit. This is the new ski. This is your new jam. This is awesome. Fits on a plate. Two studs here. Stud apart. Perfect. These fit the macro fig legs. I had a giant woolly mammoth on these, and he was skiing in a snow apocalypse dio full of space vikings. Awesome, right? But I don't necessarily buy sets for that same reason as I used to. I don't I don't really buy the sets to like grab a chunk of the world. Because like I'm an adult, I got some disposable income. If I'm gonna grab that world, I'm going we're going deep. We're I'm going to get in there. Uh, so, when I buy small sets now, really when I buy sets at all now, it's all about parts. It's always been about parts. Once this wall started getting bigger and bigger, it really became just about the parts. Not about the minifigs, just the parts. It's all parts to me. Because I, I don't keep anything displayed. I, I, don't, I don't have fucking sets out because I don't have room and I don't want to keep sets built. I barely keep the shit that I build together. So, if you go in a store and you see this set, let's talk about this set. It's a Lego movie set. It's called Batman and Super Angry Kitty Attack. It's uh, 115 pieces. Not bad. As an AFL, if you guys don't know, you should pay probably around 10 cents a part at retail. At retail. Other things we'll talk about later. Roughly a little bit better than 10 cents apart. Now this set, as an adult, I look at this set. It doesn't really draw me in the Lego movie. I, I like the Lego movie. I like the sets. This one, not so much. And I'll show you what you get with this set. And we'll talk about it in two contexts. So you get a little Terminator dude, whatever. New gun, fuck it. Uh, you get a Batman. He's a Batman, whatever, fuck it. Uh, you get a micromanager. He's got little grabby claws. He's got some like fire action and some explodey action, which I guess is fun action features. Um, I, I'm actually, I, I shouldn't hate too much on the micromanager thing because like it's a cool concept and I like the variation between all the sets because Lego could have really just been dicks and just made one and that's all you would have gotten. But every set has its own little unique micromanager. There are little boxes. It's not real compelling. Um, there's some interesting build techniques. You get Angry Kitty, right? So, you pay for four figs. It's like two fifty a fig, which actually I guess is a really good deal if you're a minifig dude. Um, I'm not so much a minifig dude. I mean, I like them. They're cool and all. And uh, we'll, we'll talk more about minifigs in a later episode. But So, I, I looked at the set, and then 
that's how I would have looked at kind of as a kid, right? It's just like, what do, what do you get? What do you get in the world building aspect? And then as an adult, like, what do you get in the parts aspect? This, there's no real fucking game changing amazing parts in this. All of this shit is old. And not old, old, but like not uncommon in all the other themes. You get a skeleton dude. I guess I shouldn't be such a dick to you, skeleton dude. You do look like a Terminator, which is pretty money. Um, I wish he was silver. Some of the sets come with silver. He's gray. But you get you get these skeleton legs, and nobody can hate on the skeleton legs. Like, they're cool. Droid arms are cool. Fucking Terminator face. Arr, out of focus. Um, you do get the new-ish gun, the Dino Hunter's gun, which is great. I, I fucking love this part. Um... I like using it for things that are not a gun, but I've seen lots and lots of sexy guns made with it. And then here's where the surprises come in. Because, like, I would not expect this. But Angry Kitty, outside of, like, the printed parts, like, you see, ah, cool, she's printing stuff, comes with a really fucking awesome part. And that part is this part. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's hollow. No, you probably can't. Ah, oh, there we go. See, there's some color behind it. Uh, hollow, dark red, with a red horn. This is awesome. And you get fucking two of them, because these are the small parts that LEGO can't figure out, like, uh, precisely that they're going to put one in, and instead of fucking you, they, they just put a little extra portion on your plate. So you get, like, two of these. Um, you get the print tail, which is cool. It's got little flame graphics. Uh, the arch has flames. I'm not sure really like how to integrate the flame arch. It really bugs me that there's not flames on this one too. And it, it makes sense because the tail goes there, but like I want to do something else with Angry Kitty. Um, printed mouth, printed eyes. I'll probably use the printed mouth for something dumbish, like using it as my mouth right now. Uh, yeah, so I'll probably do something with that. And then fucking Batman. So like He's a Batman, you know, whatever. It's cool. But, holy batarangs, dude. This thing is awesome. You get the trans smoke one by one round, which is great. Like, trans smoke, I feel, is a much more realistic color for windscreens and glasses and, you know, transparent steel shit, because I'm a space dude and I built a lot of microscale shit. And then... You also get that same hollow one by one, but in black, and that is so awesome, and you get three of these. And you know what? I gotta say this. So, I haven't seen the Lego movie since it was in theater, but I'm pretty sure Batman's little battering thing in the fucking actual film was total fucking bullshit. And this is an after the fact, oh, we only made that part in white, we better fucking think of something because somebody wants the goddamn grappling hook gun. Whatever. So yeah, this set. Buy it your own peril. If you buy it for parts, fucking good for you. If you buy it for Batman, good for you. If you don't buy it, nobody cares. It's cool. Um, so yeah, fucking small sets. Still love them. Still buy them. My taste has changed a little bit. Appreciate more things in life. Some things not so much. So, that's episode two. Bam. Uh, next episode. Going to be an exciting one. Going to be a good one. Not sure if it's going to be a total shit show. We're going to talk about collabs next. Stay tuned. Peace, guys.